Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. We're on to week seven, continuing writing a research paper in our APA documentation and formatting. You need to start writing your paper this week. So I'm gonna go over what to do in the module and then we're gonna look at a few things. Um, so be sure, of course, to review the module and do the homework as assigned. So you do have a sample APA paper, seventh edition. I'm not sure why it's at the top here. I'll move it down here in a bit, but here is your copy and paste material so you can take your paper that you've worked on say you drafted out something in Word and then you can copy and paste it into the sample paper which will have the format ready for you uh, there is some APA changes that happened uh, about three years ago so a lot of the intro videos that I showed had the basics of APA APA style 7 is the uh, one we use now so it's going to go over some of the changes from 6 to 7, and we just want to make sure that we have those changes in our paper. And I, of course, am happy to help with that. So once you start your paper and you draft it out, send it to me. You know, if you copy and paste it into the sample paper and want to make sure it's correct, I'm happy to review it before you submit it. So this is going to be helpful. It's a learning process. It's not really a grading process. And then you have a lecture, APA uh, 7 lecture, which is minimal, of course, but it's going to have some information in regards to uh, APA. So this week is mainly meant for writing your paper because it's a shorter lecture, shorter videos. Uh, another link to the Purdue OWL which has a lot of great information on how to write your paper effectively from uh, APA 7 formatting. Uh, and then how to format a PowerPoint too if you want to submit a PowerPoint with your paper uh, which is the presentation piece. You're, you don't have to do that. You can do a video like I'm doing here or you can do a PowerPoint, whatever works for you. Um, so just think about that from the perspective of what you're more comfortable with. And then you do have a discussion board post, uh, as well as a reply and your homework for Chapter 14, which is due this week. All right, I want to go into, hey, let's start writing our papers. So if you go over to course content, right below office hours, you're going to see two things, your rubric, and your APA assignment guidelines. I'm going to click on the assignment guidelines really quick. I'll remove this so you can see it. So, of course, this is your research assignment guideline, and it's been like this for quite a while since 2021. We really haven't changed anything because it's been so effective for students. But you're going to have an APA assignment that you're going to use, and you're going to upload a two to three minute uh, video. So PowerPoint in that is optional. I don't recommend you use PowerPoint because it's just more work, but you can if you feel like that helps you follow along a little bit easier. You have to have five primary references for this paper, five primary references. And of course it has to be an article or .org reference or .edu for that matter. It cannot be uh, from a .com or Wikipedia because that is not a source. All papers have to be five pages long, but in APA, right, they're double spaced and you've seen this already. Um, and we already talked about that uh, from the perspective of five scholarly sources, uh, max of 10. You're going to have an abstract, introduction and body, a conclusion, and then a reference page. This is the main part of your paper, right? These two sections, the abstract and the reference page are on the corner ends, right? So let's look at, hey, I'm ready to write my paper. I have an idea of what I want to research. And how do I do that? So I'll pause for a second and open Google Scholar. We're going to walk through this again because I think it's going to be helpful. Click up here to my library. You can actually go into a library from the perspective of um, your institution. And you'll have to go through that process, but that's not something that you need to or have to do. But you can add your library into Google Scholar and it will help like a search engine. So. I've done a couple of searches recently. Let's go, how about this? What is a good leader? And I also want to point something else out. If you haven't taken, if you haven't taken law and ethics yet, case law is a great thing that you can research. So if you're doing a, a paper on a legal issue, you can look up case law. So something that's pretty interesting. Let's go to articles because that's what we're looking at for this class. And let's go to what is a good leader. So in this, a ton of stuff pops up. So I'm going to scroll over a little bit so you can see. For my recommendation for this class, make sure you have a range in the last 10 years. So I'm going to put custom range in 10 years, right? It's 2023. So I'm going to put 2013 to 2023. 
and it's going to have a lot of great information here. So anything that you see a link on the right side with, that is free. You get the whole article. Anything like this, you're not going to be able to see the whole article because sometimes it's linked uh, and you have to pay for it or sometimes you have to log in through your library. If you log in through the library, you're going to be able to see pretty much everything here. And if you have an article, you're like, oh, I really want this article, reach out to me and I'll pull it for you. I'm happy to do that since we're not really digging into the library. Specifically, we're just using Google Scholar. So say I found one I really liked and I click on the link. I review the article. It's from Harvard Business Review. It's really great. It's got everything I want in here about what makes a good leader. You know, I'm not going to search for the DOI because we talked about that a little bit already. But I found the DOI in here. I'm ready to go. So the only thing I had to do in there was find the DOI. How do I cite the source? So how do, how do I put this in my reference list to make sure I'm not plagiarizing? Super simple. You click this button right here. It says cite. So it's going to tell me how I need to cite it from an APA perspective. I copy and paste that. However, if you look right here, this doesn't look like APA. So this is a good point out. So when I click cite, I look over, you know, APA doesn't have this PP.39 to 52 page. That doesn't look like APA. So if I click on another one, it's going to show something a little bit different. This is correct APA, right? This is the way APA format should look. So you have to watch some of these search engines because sometimes the citing can be wrong and you want to verify through Google, uh, I'm sorry, through Purdue Owl and through all these other resources that I've given you in regards to how to cite that the citing is right. So you might have to format it yourself. So if I really liked this, what makes a great leader um, article and I wanted to use it, I would have to recite this because it's not correct. Not often does it happen. It's usually correct when it cites an APA format like most of the time you're not going to have an issue but sometimes you will and you have to really take a look at it so this one's correct right it's got the APA formatting right and you would put the DOI at the end of this so you copy and paste that into your reference section so let's talk really quickly you know say you got a number of articles you started writing your paper in text citation just a reminder I know you've talked about or we've talked about this in videos already but you still have to do in text citation with your paper so let's move on to that really quickly in the sample paper that I provided uh, in the course content week 7 section so you can see in the first paragraph there's already a really great quote so it has the reference right here so it says according to the reference 2017 and then it copy and pastes uh, a, uh, a section of the, that article and it has the page number here so you know, the most of most of the time you're going to have your references like this one that says Lewis 1996. It's just going to have an outline. Uh, it's, you're not going to copy and paste direct information because you don't want to just quotes in your paper. You actually have to talk in your own words about what you learn about reading the material. So you don't just want to quote the entire paper because that's just a repeat of the other paper. Most of the time it's going to look like like what I said. And I'm going to give you an example, another example. So you have to reference this reference in in text and you also have to reference at the end of the paper in the reference section so let's get another uh, example that I want to show you guys really quickly yeah it's going to usually look like this so this one says you know it uses the the um, author at the beginning uh, of the or in the middle actually of the sentence and then most of the time you're going to use it at the end of the sentence because you're just going to summarize so it's going to look a little bit different for you that that's okay here's here's a great example because it's a direct quote when it's a direct quote you have to use a page number if it's not a direct quote and you're just using you know say uh, a broad terminology for what you reviewed you, you just say McKinsey ETL 20, 2005 remember if it's um, more than two authors you're going to put ETAL instead of all the authors in there so all this has been reviewed, of course, in other videos for you, but I'm happy to talk through if you're confused in regards to that. So when you get down to the regular reference section, we talked about copy and pasting from Google Scholar. You know, it's going to look like this. It's going to be in hanging format. You're going to have your DOI. Um, and then, it, of course, uh, you're going to have uh, the, the year and all that kind of good stuff here. This is actually a really old reference, so we don't want to go back that far. But 
this is just a good idea from the perspective of how it should look. And that, I think, is enough for you to get started writing your paper. I really am encouraged, of course, by many of you that have reached out about some of your topics, so that's great. And I'm really looking forward to reading them because some of them are very interesting, and I think you're going to do some great research uh, and maybe even have something that you want to continue to work on as time goes on in different classes. Of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. This is a very long check-in video, so I think it's going to be really helpful for you and uh, the process uh, over this week. This week is meant to start writing your paper, so start writing your paper this week. That's why you have less videos uh, and a longer check-in. If you have any questions, don't ever have, hesitate to reach out. Happy to help in any way. Thanks so much.